Hey guys, what's up? Long time no see. Four weeks ago I made a video and now I'm making another one because I just got off of school and I'm finally free to do whatever I want and mostly, oddly enough, I've been trying to figure out what I wanted to make my next video about. Um, because the last couple of months I've been making videos about games I've played in the past like couple of years and I, I still intend to do that of course. Uh, but there are some newer games that I wanted to review that came out. Um, more recently, probably something like Mario Odyssey. Um, I'm playing through Danganronpa 3 right now, and I do plan on making a video on that. But I really wanted to talk about 2017 as a year. And I'm not sure what I'm going to label this video yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to go something like this. My favorite thing to come out of 2017 is this the Nintendo Switch. And I'm going to kind of explain my reasons why, and why I might think this, and why I think the Switch overall is really the best console to get right now. Um, and I'm going to kind of, I'm, I'm not just going to explain that, but I'm also going to kind of talk about the year as a whole, and why I think this really played in the Switch's favor. So let's kind of get into that now. Um... For starters, I really want to say something, and I mean, I'm not necessarily wrong in still thinking this, but I'm still skeptical of the Switch, but I'm a lot less skeptical and very impressed with how it turned out. Now, do I think that it's completely off the hook and that it's got everything to go for it? No, not necessarily. There are things that I hope they improve on with it, such as the online mechanic, um, more specifically, talking to people online. However, um, I think a lot of it has been positive, and Nintendo really has a good precedent set for what they want to do with the Switch. Gonna have to move things over here to make room. So, when I talk about the Switch, and I, I'm talk about some of its great things and its problems, I want to overall say... My, my general outlook on it is very positive, um, which is a very good thing because I was a little down on the Switch when it came out. Um, and, you know, I, I look at every year in video games, right, and I, you know, of course there are good and bad things that happen, but, like, every year since, like, 2013, I've been just noticing this decline happening, and this decline is... Video game consoles such as the PS4 and Xbox One coming out, trying to constantly chase the PC dream. But they can't possibly do that. I mean, just coming out with a new PlayStation 4 with the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X, it doesn't do anything because you, you can't beat the customizability of a PC. That's not me trying to be pretentious or anything like that. It's just the fact of the matter. Um... You know, as long as I don't have the option to choose between 60 frames a second or 4K or whatever I really want, there's no point in choosing a PlayStation 4 over the PC. Um, and that's, that's really what it comes down to every year for me, is that we see things in the console industry completely destroying the industry. We have things, and I know that sounds hyperbolic, I know, I get it. But we have things like the loot box controversy that came out with Star Wars Battlefront. A lot of games are doing that now. Um, Shadow of War did it, and one of the 2K games did it this year. It was really damn bad. Um, we had, last year, things like broken games coming out. We had unfinished messes. I mean, that's every year. We have unfinished, unoptimized pieces of crap come out. Everyone thinks it's only on the PC. It's on everything. And that's a shame, because, you know, I, I definitely think the AAA scene has been worse with this, but every year we see the same kinds of games come out. They justify it as a new creative game with an open world, and that's not to say every game that comes out is, is this stereotype, or it's this third-person action-adventure game with stealth elements. It's the fact that, Every game I see come out, all the biggest ones are so, so derivative of everything that's, 
you know, come out the year, like a few years prior to it, and there's no innovation, there's nothing new or daring going on. Now, obviously, there are exceptions. Um, one of my favorite games of last year, actually, two favorite games of last year, one was Doom, and I loved that game. It was so much fun to play. But I'm more talking about games like Dishonored 2 and Deus Ex uh, Mankind Divided. Games like that that did something very... I mean, I guess it was derivative in a way, but it has daring game design. It doesn't shy away from what it sets out to do, and that is, in both cases, you can go about doing the stealth elements different ways. The game isn't afraid to throw hardballs at you. It's, it treats you as a gamer which is a risk that it takes because now it potentially has the risk of selling less and appealing to less people, which a lot of third-party games now strive to do to sell the game to as much people as possible. And it has this... It, it's a better game for it, right? Because the game not only functions better as a game, but it has more replayability. It's something to, to you know make the game memorable and fun and appealing and long-lasting. And that's every year in video games that this has happened. Except for Nintendo. <laughs> because, like, even when the Wii U was failing, we had some amazing, especially in, like, 2014, we had some amazing games released for the system. We had, um, I think that year, that was Smash Brothers, there was Bayonetta 2, Xenoblade Chronicles X, all in the same year, and I'm like, holy crap. Like, that's a good lineup. Um, I think even earlier that year, a little before that, we got um, Super Mario World. Um, or Super Mario 3D World, I think it was called. Which is a phenomenal game. And so 2017 has been no different with this, right? I mean, we've had this loot box controversy. We still have these big third-party games coming out and underwhelming significantly. I mean, with a few exceptions, we do have games that have come out that have been really good this year in the third-party realm. But, I mean, I see most of it coming from Nintendo. Um, Zelda Breath of the Wild released this year, and it is probably one of the best Zelda games I've ever played. It's not my favorite one, but it's definitely one of the best. I can totally admit that. Um, we had Mario Odyssey come out, and that was amazing. And we had Splatoon 2, which, while I think it's a little bit of an overrated game, I definitely still very much enjoyed it. And did you notice a little, you know, comparison coming there? They were all from Nintendo. And that's really what it comes down to, doesn't it? Um, the Switch just had the biggest games this year, in my opinion. Um, I know, you know, PlayStation had Uncharted Lost Legacy, and I think Horizon Zero Dawn came out this year, too. Um, but, I mean, compared to what we got on the Switch, it ain't got nothing, right? Uh, these, are ga these three games I just named are games you can pump hours and hours and hours into, and all on this, this little tablet, right? Um... And that's what's so incredible about it, right? This is the main thing I think I get to with the Switch. It's that this little thing is the only console that has any right to exist. With how small it is, with how compact it is, and that's because it's portable. The reason the Switch has any right to exist is because it does something my PC right here can legitimately not do. And no PC right now can legitimately do reasonably. And that is play games like Doom on the go on the tiny little tablet. It cannot do that. I mean, unless we're talking about like going out and grabbing an NVIDIA Shield, but at which case, you're not really playing the game off of the tablet itself, and you can't take it anywhere you go. You know, you're at the mercy of Wi-Fi and things that would obviously be an inconvenience. And so, that's why I think the Switch was the best thing to happen this year. Because, when you think about it, it's the only thing, it's the only console that's done something unique and different. That's what I keep saying to everyone. When, when I don't have the options that I do on a console that I have on the PC, free online, better graphics, 
or the ability to customize my experience, basically that's what it is on the PC, to what I want to do, I have no reason to pick up a PS4. Of course, they have the exclusives, sure, that's great, but, like, you need to give me more than that, right? Um, exclusives are only as good as your tastes make them out to be. I mean, we can all agree on that, right? Let's let's ditch the, the Switch exclusives for a second that came out this year and really talk about just the Switch itself. The reason I wanted to get a Switch wasn't just because for Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath of the Wild, things like that. It was to play a game like Doom on the Switch. Did you know what I actually... I actually beat Doom the other night, but you know what I was actually also playing and I completed on the Switch? L.A. Noir. And Ellie Noir was phenomenal to play on the Switch. I mean, of course, it had a couple frame rate issues here and there. It had a couple of technical bugs, but I can deal with that because I'm playing Ellie Noir on the go. That's incredible. I played Skyrim. I played like 26 hours into that already on the Nintendo Switch. And that's incredible. And it just makes me think because I know Zelda, uh, Zelda. I know Nintendo's not out of the wasp's net nest yet because they really still need to prove themselves as far as I'm concerned with the third party support. But imagine, and I'm not saying this is going to happen, I'm not saying it's even realistic to say, but imagine if Rockstar came out tomorrow and said, wow, the Switch sales for Ellie Noir were phenomenal. We're going to port GTA 5 and we're also going to port the new Red Dead Redemption to the Switch. Do you know how big that would be? You know, even if the game had a couple frame rate issues, even if the game had resolution drops, like Doom on the Switch drops down to like 540p at points, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 drops even below that at points. But do you know how incredible it would be to play a game like Red Dead Redemption 2 on this tiny, this tiny little tablet? It changes the whole way you think about playing video games, in my opinion. And Nintendo were the only ones that did that this year, as far as I'm concerned with consoles. I don't give a crap about the PS4 Pro, and I certainly don't care about the Xbox One X. The only reason I would probably pick up an Xbox One X in the future was for that emulation feature for the Xbox 360 games and the original Xbox games. Not only would I not have to plug two different systems into my TV anymore, I would just have... You know, I would have better performing games, because that's basically what they do when they emulate it on the Xbox One X. But that's what, I, what it comes down to. It's like, I have no reason to want these systems anymore. They don't do anything different, or even better, than what my PC can do. Um, again, I know it sounds like I'm being pretentious here, but like, I mean... Uh, like, forgetting my two monitors here, my nice setup that I, I really worked hard on, um, I just have everything here. I have this nice keyboard I can play games on. I have, I can choose from any controller I want. Again, I have free online. I could choose how I want to play my games, at what frame rates, at what resolutions. It's just amazing. But, again, the one thing my PC can't do is be portable on the go easily. And so, really, I think what I come down to is that the Switch really proved to me this year, because this was, this is, in my opinion, the best thing that came out of 2017, was that the Switch proved to me that consoles can still somewhat be relevant. Um, it was done by making, by legitimately doing one thing that the my PC can't do already. And so, you know, talking about the year as a whole, the other thing I really liked about the Switch was that it kind of avoided all the crap that came out this year. Um, EA, for one thing, has released crap all year. We had a Mass Effect Andromeda. I, was, I felt stupid for buying that game, and I played, I played a good amount of it. And I hated it. I thought it was a terrible game. Um, it was unfinished, it was unpolished, and it just wasn't good at all. Um, and of course we had the Star Wars Battlefront controversy. You know, I think the Switch did miss a few games. Like, I still think it needs something like Overwatch on it. And, you know, really, I'd be fine with everything being ported to it. But, like, I 
felt, for the most part, the Switch games were pretty... Like, the controversy, if any, surrounding the Switch with its games was very minimal. I mean, the most I could think of that was controversial about the Switch, and this is just off the top of my head, is the fact that the installs were a little bit ridiculous at points. Like, Ellie Noir didn't fully come onto the cartridge. You had to download the rest of it using an SD card, which is a little, you know, annoying. Yes, I understand that, and that's stupid. But, like, if that's the biggest controversy that came out of this year with the Switch, I think it's looking pretty good for the Switch, honestly. Um, I'm really glad that I have one. Um, and, you know... We have people like, we have companies like Sony saying stupid things like, we're going to block mods. And I know they went back on it, but it's still like so limited on there that it's just crappy. And we have, you know, companies like Microsoft lying, lying about the capabilities of the Xbox One X, saying that it was going to be a 4K uncompromised system. They lied to you. I mean, I feel for once... Nintendo really delivered on something they promised. You know, they didn't... They really didn't shoot for the stars, I feel like they did, with other systems. And that's to say that, like, they didn't promise too much, but, like, I, th I feel like with what we got was very capable and very fun. And so... I guess this is my year review of 2017, because not much changes from year to year. Um, every year, I get more and more anti-console. I, I play my PS4 from time to time for one game, and that's Persona 5. I waited for that game for a long time, but Persona 5, or, or rather the PS4, isn't a good system because of Persona 5. It doesn't make it suddenly better. Persona 5 is just a good game on its own. If it was on anything else, it would still be a great game, and it wouldn't make the system that it's on any better. The PS4 has underwhelmed me since it came out, and if anything, it's pushed me more and more towards the PC. Um, we still have consoles charging you to pay online, charging you for this, that, and the third, restricting access to things. And throughout all of it, I still maintain that the PC is the best place to game. Bar none. You don't you don't need a console unless you you want to play the exclusives, honestly. That's the only reason you buy a console now. There is nothing else this PS4 box can do that my PC can't. There's nothing. Like nothing capability-wise that it can do better even. Um, but now I have a supplement to my PC, and that's the Switch. <laughs> Nintendo, honestly, I feel like you guys did a great job with it, and I feel like you guys really need to keep piling on this third-party support. We need big announcements for the Switch. We need way more third-party support. I'm, gonna, I'm in support of the third-party support as long as I'm interested in the game, obviously. I'm not just going to blindly buy a game. But, I mean, if this is what the future is looking like with all the great games you guys have coming out and all of the um, third-party support you're getting so far, as well as the indie game support... Oh my god, the indie game support is phenomenal on this, this little tablet. This is what I recommend you get. I recommend you get a PC and a Switch. <laughs> and that's funny because, like, I never thought I'd be recommending it. I never thought I'd be recommending the Switch, let alone a console. And so that's really my year-end report about gaming in general. I, I thought it was a pretty good year for Nintendo, and of course it's a great year for the PC. So, really, I, I don't have much more to say on the consoles. I feel like they've done more wrong than good in any sense of the word. Um... Obviously, don't get offended by that. I mean, if you enjoy playing your PS4 and your Xbox, I say this all the time, people sometimes don't get it, but I, I feel like reiterating it. If you enjoy playing your PS4 or your Xbox One, that's fine. That's completely okay. Um, I'm just saying, this is my, my two cents on it. You don't need 
uh, either of those consoles, unless I guess unless you really want to play the exclusives. That's all there is on these systems. I mean, even now, the exclusives are being pulled. Like, Danganronpa 3 was a Sony exclusive for a while, and now they're all on PC. There's no reason to buy them on PS4 if you have the PC version. You could play it at more resolutions, better frame rates. Um, but that's that's just how it is now. Um, and of course, like if I said, if they all came to the to the Switch, I would say buy it on there t if you want to have a handheld version of it. That's that's really what it comes down to now. But you know, like I said, if you enjoy playing them, that's fine. Uh, just respect my opinion as much as I I respect yours. I do respect your opinion on that. But um, I hope you guys really like this video. <laughs> I I, I kind of made it more free form than I normally do. Um, I really wanted to, to gush about the Switch a little bit, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about the, what happened this year. Um, that is to say, like, I didn't really have much planned for another video right now. Um, you know, despite actually being off from school, I am pretty busy. Uh, <laughs> I have, I took more hours at work to get more money because I'm flat broke right now. Um, from school payments, and uh, there are other things going on in the background too. Um, not bad things, of course, but you know, things that are keeping me busy. Um, but I definitely try. I will try to keep a a you know a more consistent upload schedule like I have been. Uh, but yeah, um, 2017, good year for games, I guess, and hopefully 2018 is better. I mean, I always hope for that. Uh, but, yeah, take it easy and have a good one.